Okay, my friends, here we are. <laughs> In a new world. Um, thank you for, I have been away on study leave and um, have enjoyed that time very much. Thank you. Thank you for being here. And welcome to our uh, new online audience as well, not audience, but congregation, congregation. So this is a brand new thing for us as we enter into this world. And who would have guessed, like, right? I mean, just a month ago, who would guess that we would be here now, that basically all of Italy would be on lockdown and um, people just trying to make their way home. So uh, who would have guessed that we would be looking at the stock market wondering, like, what is going on? <laughs> um, thank God we know, because of our faith, we know that absolutely nothing, no threat, no virus, no fears, no powers in heaven or, or earth can ever separate us from God's love in Jesus Christ. The truth is the living water of God's love and peace has been poured into our hearts through the gift of the Holy Spirit. So draw on that water. We have all the resources of our faith to draw on. And now is the time to do that, not just for ourselves, but for those that we love, the, our neighbors, you know, other people, to draw deep into the well of our own faith, draw up faith, hope, and love so that we can share that with others. So let's begin with prayer. Almighty God, you know, you know that we have no power in ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts or fearful thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So if you want to stand, um, and by the way, you can find our bulletin online as well. Um, we're going to start with Wayfaring Stranger. I'm just a poor Wayfaring Stranger traveling through this world.
This horn will rest beneath the sun. I'll drop the cross of self denial and enter in. Blessed be the Lord who forgives all our sins. God, have mercy and the Lord's prayer. Amen. Let us now confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. seated. So our first reading today comes from the book of Exodus. So here's what's happening. The people have been traveling in the wilderness, right? And it's not just the grown-ups that are out there in the wilderness. It's all their children. It's all their livestock. And there are no conveniences, right? There's no soap. There's no supplies to shop for. There's no way to stock up on anything. No non-perishables. And like I said, it's not just you and your children out there. It's all your livestock, your cattle, your donkeys, all, you know, everything that you've got who need grass and water, right? And there's no water in sight, like none for days no water. Now St. Paul says to let all your needs be known to God in prayer. And if the Israelites could have just done that, you know, could have just let God know what they need, water, and trusted him to provide it, maybe if they could just have remembered that all that God had already done for them, you know, he'd freed them from slavery, he'd brought them through the Red Sea, he'd made sure that they had manna and like quail and bread to eat. If they could have remembered that, then things might have gone a little bit easier for them. But in the midst of their desperate need, they just couldn't remember. And so, right, we can empathize. So we're gonna hear what happened for those Israelites. From Exodus 17. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rishadim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, give us water to drink. Moses said to them, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, 
Why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, what shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massah and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord saying, is the Lord among us or not? We'll read Psalm 95 responsively. I'll read to the asterisk and the congregation will follow. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. And raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God. And a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth. The sea is his, for he made it. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee. And kneel before the Lord our for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Harden not your hearts, as your forebears did in the wilderness. They put me to the test. Forty years long I detested that generation, and I said, So I swore in my wrath. A reading from Paul's letter to the church in Rome. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. Much more surely then, now that we have been justified by his blood, will we be saved through him from the wrath of God. For if, while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more surely, having been reconciled, will we be saved by his life. But more than that, we even boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, well, how is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, sir, you have no bucket and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob who gave us this well and with his sons and his flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to life eternal. The woman said to him, sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, go, call your husband and come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you are right in saying, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. (laughs) What you have said is true. The woman said to him, sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshiped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, woman, believe me, The hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you know. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I who am speaking to you am he. Just then his disciples came. They were astonished that he was speaking with a woman, but no one said, what do you want? Or why are you speaking with her? The woman left her water jar and went back to her city. She said to her people, come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. This cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and they were on their way to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to each other, "Eh, surely no one has brought him food to eat. Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to complete his work. Do not say four months more and then comes the harvest. But I tell you, look around you and see how the fields are already ripe for harvesting. The reaper is already receiving wages and is gathering fruit for life eternal so that the sower and the reaper may rejoice together. Here the saying holds true, that one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from that city came to believe in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay, with, to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, it is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the savior of the world. The gospel of the Lord. 
Seated. That's one of our longest gospel readings. <laughs> so good for you all. When we when it comes to the passion, that's that's an even longer reading. But um, this this reading today is just it's a beautiful reading, and I want to pair it up with the reading that we had of the gospel from last week, which was the story of Nicodemus. Do you remember that story? So Nicodemus is a Pharisee kind of cream of the crop when it comes to the Jewish people. A Pharisee, he comes to Jesus when? At, at night, right? Because he doesn't want anyone else to see that he's coming out to, to talk with this rabbi, with Jesus. And in the, the discussion with Jesus, um, Jesus says, you know, you, you have to be born from above. You have to be born again. And Nicodemus, as is often the case in John's Gospel, Nicodemus understands him literally. How can that be? That, that's an impossible kind of thing. What are you talking about, Jesus? And Jesus, as always in, in John's Gospel, he says, think deeper, look different, look with your spiritual eyes, with your spiritual understanding. Born from the Spirit, born from above. And then he goes on to say that um, that God loves the whole, God sent his son for the whole world because he loves the whole world. And Nicodemus kind of departs, and we don't really, we don't have no idea what happened, except that at the very end of the gospel, he, when Jesus has been crucified, Nicodemus appears again in public this time and says, you know, give the body to me, I'll, I'll bury him. So that's Nicodemus. Okay, so now that's in uh, the, a little bit before this story in John, Nicodemus, and now we have the Samaritan woman. Broad daylight, right? Nighttime, broad daylight. Samaritan. Now let me tell you about Jews and Samaritans. It says they, they don't have anything in common. That's kind of an understatement. They really, really don't like each other. Like you can think, you know, Sunni and Shia, right? They're both, they're both Muslim, but there is like real enmity between Sunnis and Shias. Samaritans and the Jews both have the same, they're of the same religion. They have the Torah. They both follow the Torah, the law of Moses. But they really profoundly disagree about how to do that how to follow the, the law of Moses. And so no Jew going the route that Jesus goes to, to Jerusalem would go through Samaria, even though that's the shortest route is to go through Samaria. They would, they would take the long way around. So Jesus doesn't have to go to Samaria, but the gospel says Jesus had to go to Samaria. Why did Jesus have to go to Samaria? I mean, nobody else did. He had to go to Samaria because God loves the whole world. Remember from Nicodemus? God loved the whole world so much that he sent his only beloved son so that we could have eternal life, so that everyone, the whole world, all people could be redeemed and renewed. So Jesus had to go to Samaria. So, he's, so he comes to Samaria enemy country, and he's talking to a woman, which is a no-no. Not only that, he's talking to a woman at a well. Now, wells in the Bible have kind of like, that's where boy meets girl, right? That's where um, Isaiah and Rebecca, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get my, not Isaiah, but Isaac, Right? Like, it's the romantic place to meet. I don't know what to do with that, folks, but they're at a well. <laughs> and maybe, maybe in the Gospel of John, you know, maybe he's kind of drawing on that idea of the intimacy that God wants to have with us. That God wants to come to us personally. Wants to know us personally. 
Maybe that's what John has in mind with Jesus meeting this woman at the well. But it gets even a little bit more dicey than that in that she is alone at the, he's alone and she's alone. His disciples have gone to town, right? To buy food. So they're there together and they have this theological conversation, which is, I mean, there's just so many transgressive and amazing things about this story. You wouldn't have a rabbi, a Jewish rabbi would not have a, you know, a real theological conversation with any, with any Samaritan, certainly with any woman. But Jesus does. And Jesus does because of this thing that we found out with his in Nicodemus. God loves the whole world. Loves the whole world so much that he sent Jesus to be with us. Now, I don't know about you, but I think that's really good news that we need in our world right now, that we need with us right now. Because the world, you know, it's easy to kind of get fearful of each other. I mean, in normal circumstances, we point the finger at each other. We kind of want to draw walls around us and separations. And now when we're practicing social distancing, right? I mean, fear is a big, fear is happening, anxiety. And so it helps us to remember God loves the whole world, is holding us all in his hands. We almost were gonna sing, he's got the whole world in his hands, right? He's got the whole world in his hands. We can remember that right now. He's got you and me. He's got the Italians, the Africans, the South Americans, you know, the Chinese, the Iranians, us. He has the whole world in his hands. And I think right now, especially we, as people of faith, you know, need to not only draw on that resource for ourselves, but also so that we can be a blessing to others and a, and a, a reminder and a help to others. You know, that, well, I don't know. I don't want to be trite, but that things are going to be okay. I don't know how it's going to, you know, we don't know in what direction things are moving, right? We don't know. Um, we know that this will be, for a time, this will be our last uh, public gathering for a short time, um, hopefully short time. Our bishop has said that um, Monterey County, uh, Mon this, that our deanery uh, needs to move away from public worship. So this is a precious time uh, that we're gathered here together. And um, we will be moving to online, all online, which I'm hoping is working really well. Um, we'll, we'll find out after the service today. We'll get feedback from our friends at home. So we live in this time, we're in this time of like, uh, wow, what, what is this looking like now? We have a college student home already, right? Did your, is Chico shut down? Okay, yeah, so things are moving quickly. But we have, we know that God sent Jesus for the whole world, had to go to Samaria. So here we are, and we are blessed. We are blessed by God's presence uh, with us in person and with us as we gather in spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And we're going to continue now with the prayers of the people. Our song response is um, Kyrie eleison.
Holy God, that you would draw us together in a spirit, in a, um, in your will, in your will and in your way, that we might ground your, ground ourselves in faith and in hope and in love. We pray all of this in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Peace. 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 The Lord's peace. The Lord. Okay, my friends. So we've just gotten some texts that live stream is working great. So yay! I just want to say thank you to Eric who has uh, put all of this together. And 
Yeah. And thank you to, please be seated. And thank you to Crystal, who is, um, you know, who put up everything up on our um, web, website, web page. So we have really, really good people here at Good Shepherd. And I just want to thank you for your pledges, your offerings, uh, which are online. You can give online. Um, because it makes all of this possible. And it, it makes it possible for us to move into whatever the next iteration is for us uh, for the time being until we can, you know, until things return uh, to normal. Um, so thank you. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your pledges. Thank you for your offerings. Um, they mean the world. I mean, it means that Good Shepherd can be here for the wider community. So announcements, as I said, uh, Bishop Lucinda just last night, um, called on the uh, on our deanery um, churches to ha for this to be the last public this Sunday to be the last public gathering uh, in, for a while so I think it'll it'll be through at least the end of March our preschool is now closed our preschool is in concert with the um, public schools and those public schools have closed so our preschool is also um, closed so I just ask for you to pray really uh, we, we need to be the church now and that means praying for each other. It means keeping tabs on each other, making sure that you call, that, that no one gets isolated, um, and that you read the e-news, that you read the things that come out uh, from, from us uh, so that you can stay abreast and we can stay in touch that way. I am available, so please uh, text me, call me, email me. Um, it would be good to call to make sure that I'm here if you want to see me in person to make sure that we have a a time when we can um, meet in person. Um, let, oh, I just want to make sure that you know we can't, you can give online. You go to goodshepherdcorral.org and right there on the, on the front page, on the home page is a give button and that works um, beautifully. So uh, today for offering, uh, there is an offering plate here and you're welcome to just drop, we're not gonna pass the offering plate, but you're welcome to make an offering. Um, communion will be in one kind only. Uh, I will serve the bread, and I will serve that not at the kneeling rail, but right here uh, at the front of the church. For those of you who are at home, I invite you to use this time for meditation, uh, for prayer, for gazing out the window, or for sharing, you know, a toast or tea with, with a loved one at home. Let us walk now in love, and uh, let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God. I keep fighting voices in my mind that say I'm not enough. Every single lie that tells me I will never measure up. Am I more than just the sum of every high and every low? Remind me once again just who I am. Cause I need to know You say I am loved When I can't feel a thing You say I am strong When I think I am weak You say I am held When I am falling short
taking all I have and now I'm laying it at your feet You have every failure, God You have every victory you lift up your hearts let us give thanks to the Lord our God it is right to give God thanks and praise it is truly right and good and joyful to give thanks all holy God source of life and fountain of mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord who was tempted in every way as we are and yet did not sin by his grace we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we sing. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we failed to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us, and so we violated your creation, abused one another, and rejected your love. And yet you never cease to care for us. You prepared the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery. You sustained us in the wilderness. You raised up prophets to renew your promises of salvation. And then in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word, made mortal flesh in Jesus, born into the human family, dwelling among us, he revealed your glory and giving himself freely to death on the cross, he triumphed over every evil, opening the way of freedom and life. And on the night before he died for us, our savior Jesus Christ took bread. And <clears throat> when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And as supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, 
Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present... <clears throat> We now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into that everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons that with all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us sing. are the gifts of God for the people of God. Know that receiving communion in one kind is perfectly orthodox. We receive the wholeness of Christ within the bread. I invite you to come forward to receive.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. I'm not going to ask if you have a birthday to come forward, but would you please stand? If you have a birthday or anniversary. Okay, and we are going to bless you. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> um, you have a birthday. I actually do. I <laughs> forgot. <it>. Yes. <laughs> yes. So since you're standing here, I thought I'd come okay. and stand with you. Okay, thank you. And, and Alan are, and I are here to, not only does God love you, but we love you. And we wish you a very happy birthday and many, many more. Thank and you. And we care for you dearly. Thank you. Thank you. I wish you. I could hug you. I know, but I feel it. <laughs> I feel it. So we, we have a, a little gift for a card and a little gift. And there was going to be a cake at coffee hour. Yes, so, but there's no coffee so hours. So now you get the cake. Okay. <laughs> and, I'll, and I'll keep it for you. Okay. okay. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. This, these are our beautiful senior and junior wardens, and I just love them dearly, Alan and Tim. And it's your birthday. Saturday. Saturday. Okay. And I, okay, so we're going to pray for Dottie and for me. Um, Holy God, thank you for the gift of life. We ask your blessing on these, your servants, Dottie and Linda. And may we always know your love and care each and every day of our lives and strengthen our trust in your goodness. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. I'm going to say, oh, we have um, a shawl that we will bless. Um, this parish spreads the good news to so many people, and one of the ways we do that is through these shawls. And so, holy God, we ask your blessing on this shawl, the person who will receive it, and the person whose prayers are knit into this, um, into this shawl. Thank you. Amen. Please stand for our blessing. The psalmist tells us, come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
Incredible group. 